Last couple of weeks, you may have seen some disturbing news that the Earth's core has stopped rotating. You may have also heard that the Earth's magnetic pole is moving northwards at a breakneck speed and over the last 150 years, it has moved over 1000 kilometers. Scientists suggest that the pole can migrate at 10 km per year and even flip from pole to pole. Lately, the pole has been moving at 40 km per year speed and in a few decades, it will reach Siberia. South magnetic pole is also moving and now it has moved away from the Antarctic mainland. Now, I am not into some conspiracy theories and science is also kind of vague as to what is happening and why this is happening. We know everything about Mars and other planets, but we don't actually know what's happening directly beneath our feet. Modern science actually has never observed the pole reversal and what actually happens when the Earth's core stops spinning. Now, at this point, I wouldn't advise you to see the 2003 movie, The Core. It shows all sorts of disaster happening and it's really demoralizing. But the real question is, how do we actually know what is really happening beneath our feet, some 6,000 kilometers below? Today, we'll try to simplify the hard science and how scientists can confirm what is beneath our feet and what is actually happening. Consequences are not clear yet, but it can be devastating. Let's start our journey. Normally, the crude oil and gas gets deposited between 1,000 and 2,000 meter depth. But the deepest oil and gas reserve was found some 12,000 meters deep into the crust. Now, to find this reserve, we need to carry out seismic survey, where the vessel sends out a broadband low-frequency sound wave downward. The wave penetrates the seabed and we get back reflected wave from various layers of rock. These waves are then processed on a computer to get the graphical picture of the seabed strata. But these sound waves are not strong enough to penetrate 6,700 km deep inside the earth. We need something colossal, something real big wave. On an average, there are 2,000 magnitude 5 and more earthquakes happens every year. Earthquake generates seismic wave. The frequency range of the seismic wave is very large. From as high as audible range, greater than 20 hertz, to as low as 1 to 0 decimal 1 hertz. Now, these seismic waves travel through different materials at different speed. By measuring how long it takes for seismic waves to travel from their source to the recording station and applying knowledge of how they interact with different materials, we can figure out where Earth's layers are and what they are like. This is similar to the way ultrasound is used to image the human body. Another feature of the seismic wave is that some, called P waves, can travel rapidly through both liquids and solids, but others, called S wave, can only travel through solids and are slower than P waves. This is very handy because observing where P waves travel and S waves do not allows us to identify regions within the earth that are melted. When an earthquake occurs, there is a zone on the opposite side of the earth where S waves are not measured. The S waves shadow zone occurs because S waves cannot travel through the liquid outer core. The P wave shadow zone occurs because seismic velocities are much lower in the liquid outer core than in the overlaying mantle. So the P waves are refracted in a way that leaves a gap. Now this high pressured and hot liquid outer core is spinning along with solid iron and nickel inner core, albeit at a different rates and direction, which is again ever changing over approximately 70 years or so. But this spin is vital. The liquid metal that flows in the Earth's core creates electrical current, which in turn creates our magnetic field. We all know that this magnetic field protects our Earth from the harmful cosmic rays and the solar wind. And without the protection of this magnetic field, all life on Earth will be exposed to dangerous levels of UV rays. If the Earth's core stops spinning, the magnetic field may get weaker and the harmful UV rays may enter our atmosphere. 
and this may not be good for us. If the liquid outer core stops spinning, then we might lose our magnetosphere completely. This will not happen overnight, but gradually the Earth's atmosphere will be blown away by the solar wind. Oceans and lakes will boil away and all life on Earth will cease to exist. Remember, this already happened to Mars. Another scenario is pole reversal. As per the geological record, the pole reversal or the pole flip happens every 200 to 300,000 years. Last time your compass pointed towards south was about 800,000 years ago. So we are long overdue. We don't really know what would happen. But the NASA scientists say that the pole reversal happens over hundreds or thousands of years. One worrisome scenario is that the heated outer core drives the convection current in the mantle, which in turn moves the continents around. It may either slow down and stop completely or speed up. Both scenarios are not good. We may see lots of major earthquakes happening all over the world. Earth's crust splitting apart and red hot basalt pouring out and intensified volcanic activity. Some slumbering supervolcano may decide to wake up again. If any of this doomsday scenario happens, they will be prolonged over hundreds of years. But I might be overreacting. Let's see what Mr. Michio Kaku has to say. Roughly every 70 years or so, we're not sure, the, uh, the, the center of the Earth does seem to go backwards. The core could move independently of the crust. The core seems to be about to spin backwards. This is worse than having a tsunami or an earthquake. The stability of what you walk on is at stake. The good news is probably uh -huh. there's nothing to worry about. Okay. I'll go and get some radiation pills, some military-grade MRE, loads of sunscreen, some camping gear, and an inflatable boat. See you on the flip side.